So welcome everybody. Um, all of us have been on plenty of Zoom calls, but just a little bit of Zoom etiquette so everyone knows. Um, please keep your microphone on mute unless you are speaking. Um, and we will have speakers that come later during this program. And so when it's each speaker's turn, if they could unmute themselves and then mute themselves back. We are doing a Q&A in the chat. So, and then certainly at the end of this call, we'll take more Q&A. So if you can hold questions till then. We are recording this event. So if you don't want your picture recorded, please turn your camera off and feel free to virtually clap for our speakers. We, I am so thankful that they're here to give you the insight into all of their volunteer activities that they do and all the rewards that they're getting from their time spent with Female Strong and Yay. So with that, I'd like to introduce myself. So I don't know all of you, but I am Jody Lavoie. I am the CEO of Female Strong. And today I added up what my background is. I have 30 years, yikes, <laughs> of working. So I started in sales, then I moved on to some nonprofit management. And then in 2000, my late husband and I started a supply chain technology company and as any good entrepreneur does, it's all hands on deck. So I did some bookkeeping, I did some marketing, I did some sales, I did some investor relations, and then I took eight years off to raise my three daughters. And in 2014, my husband passed away unexpectedly, and I took over running the company, and it was about 65 employees and 50 million in sales. So it was a really good sized company. And I sold it to private equity in 2017. So, like I mentioned, I'm also a mother of three daughters who are now 20, 18, and 15. So uh, we're a house full of girls here, except for our male dog. Uh, Female Strong is my dream job. I am so lucky to be here. It's a combination of everything that I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about girls, I'm passionate about advancing women into positions of leadership in the future. I'm passionate about changing the girls' lives that Female Strong serves so that they can have a different place in the workplace in the future than a lot of us are experiencing. I wanna thank everyone for coming. On this call, we have a lot of different participants. Uh, we have our volunteers, volunteers that have been current volunteers, volunteers that are past volunteers. We have volunteers that are interested in becoming a volunteer. And then there are many of you out there that are just wanting to also just learn more about Female Strong and what we do. We have our Female Strong staff and you'll meet many of them today. And we have some Female Strong board members. And I wanna especially thank our speakers today for taking their time to be with us and share a little bit about their story. Here is our mission. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about Female Strong and who we are, because the name is new to some of you that have been long-term volunteers. Uh, for a long time, we were Yay Chicago, and we still are Yay Chicago. But what we learned, we are coming into our seventh year here in Chicago, and as we've been running the Yay program, we've found that our girls are just hungry for more more activities, more programs that can help them build confidence. Yay still is our flagship program and will always be our flagship program, but we wanted to expand. And so we added this new brand, Female Strong, that really is our parent organization, if you will. So if you get emails from Female Strong, it's us, it's still Yay, we're still here. I wanted to tell you a little bit about, and, and this is our mission. Um, and everybody can read it, but it's what we do, our hands-on programs, mentorship and experiences that build confidence in middle school and high school girls so they can become our future leaders. We have evolved. So last year we had one program and we served 14 girls. And now this year we have four programs. We still have our Yay Chicago program. We have, we launched this summer our first idea camp um of course it was going to be in person but it, it went virtual as everything has 
We have launched some book groups. We've done two so far, and the second one is finishing up. And we launched our Business Blast program. Our Business Blast program is a continuation for, of the YAY program, if you will, but very separate. It's for our YAY graduates who want to take their businesses to another level. And so with Business Blast, the girls work, we have an awesome instructor, Chrissy. I don't know if she's on the call, but she is doing an amazing job with our girls. We have eight girls currently in that program. When the program starts, they set a goal. What do they want to accomplish in the six weeks they're in the Business Blast program? And they work with mentors and in the classroom to help meet that goal. And the intent is to have this Business Blast program three or four times a year. Other girls may take it multiple times. So anyway, we're very excited about that. This year, we've already served 114 girls in, our, in all of our programs. So that is pretty cool. I wanted to share with you a little bit about what our goals are for the year. And I kind of view the year, our fiscal year starts July 1st. So thinking fiscal year-ish. Um, our YAY program, and you'll learn more about that, is going virtual. We want to expand the YAY program into the public school system as an after-school program in the fall of next year. And we're going to reunite <laughs> some discussions with some schools. Um, come this fall so we can gear up for the next fall. Obviously, with all schools going virtual this year, it just threw, threw a wrench in things. So um, that will start again soon. We will continue to do um, our idea camp next summer, and we're very hopeful that it will be in person. Our intent with that was to move it different days to different businesses within the city and get some really hands-on experience from business leaders that are are in the trenches and have our girls do creative projects that get their ideas jenning and thoughts going for how they can make change in their community with themselves start a business but really just trying to take action for when you have an idea what do you do with it and then, of course, our book group. And we have studied so far uh, the confidence code for girls, and we're currently uh, studying hidden figures. So I don't know what our next book will be, but we've had probably 20 to 30 girls at least on all of our book group calls. So that's been pretty cool. I'm not going to go into the YAY program because I don't want to steal Rachel and Sheila's thunder. Um, but Rachel will be talking to you about it in a little bit. But how can you help? So you're here. Many of you are already volunteering your time and talents. If you're not, we would love to have you. We always love everyone that's here to spread the word about what we do on your own social media, to your friends, with your colleagues at work, because uh, the more people that know about us, the better. And we love that. And um, donations are always welcome. As we are growing, because we would like to serve 200 girls by the end of next year, dollars are always welcome. Our tuition for our programs and does not cover all of our costs, so we're always looking for donors. And let's see, I wanna do a special shout out right now to Diana. We could not do any volunteer things that we do without Diana. And I think many of you have met her personally. You've talked to her on the phone. You have received her emails. She is just the warmest, kindest, most caring person. So I wanted to make sure that I took a minute and gave a special shout out to Diana because we appreciate everything you do. Thank you, Diana. And now I want to turn it over to Rachel. Um, but before I do that, I want to introduce Sheila Chenoy, who's our program manager and associate consultant. Sheila last year managed our YAY program and will continue to do so this year. And Rachel has been our YAY instructor last year. She will continue to do that this year. And she's also volunteered her time to lead our book groups. So we're very fortunate to have them. And I am going to mute myself. And Rachel, I'll turn it over to you to talk about the YAY program. Absolutely, Jody. Thank you so much for that warm introduction. 
Um, yeah, so as Jody mentioned, my name is Rachel Gitlevich. I um, am the instructor with the Yay Chicago program. I've also been doing the book groups. I'm also a conscious uh, leadership and mindfulness coach as well. And so with the Yay Chicago program, I just wanted to kind of give a good highlight and brief overview of what it looks like, what it all entails. I know a lot of you all, uh, the volunteers on this call, um, have been mentors to some of the girls in our past. And so thank you so much for volunteering your time. Um, the girls have been so, so appreciative. And we really couldn't get them to where they were for investor panel without you all volunteers. So thank you again for being on this call and for doing all that you do. And so basically with the Yay Chicago program, um, Sheila and I work in tandem together to really create a full curriculum for these girls where they come with maybe a brief idea or at least some sort of concept that they want to start a business. Maybe they already have um, an idea that they want to bring to life or maybe it's just like a little tiny glimmer of an idea but essentially we kind of take that idea we really grow it we kind of we start watering it we plant it we do all the things that go into this idea and really bring it to life so that it's a full-fledged business so basically everything that you would need to do as an entrepreneur to have a business to bring to market um you, we do that with them so we take the the business plan. So, you know, we have them create a whole um, summer, like a management summary, executive summary, have all the financials planned, have it really be a plausible business. So from A to Z. And so we take these business plans, we really kind of, we work with the mentors, uh, we pair them up with mentors halfway through the program so that they can really actually fine tune and make these actual business plans that they can present to a panel full of investors. And so they kind of go in front of these uh, investors, you know, a lot of them don't really have a lot of public speaking knowledge in, um, in the beginning. And so, you know, I remember with these girls last year, they were so scared to go in front of um, you know, in front of their classmates and like they'd get so shy and so nervous before they would even like talk about their idea. But we were kind of always trying to engage them and get them used to speaking in front of one another and actually being open to feedback from their classmates, which was so wonderful to witness because, you know, the things that you can hear it from an adult. Um, so you can hear it from an adult adult like oh like I don't know if this is actually like a business that makes sense but when you actually hear it from your classmates then you can actually like your your classmates are kind of asking you questions so for example like oh like how are you gonna in, like instate some sort of like security measures so we had a girl that had um, she wanted to create a business like a volunteer based business but you could also get paid for it but you're going to like random neighbors houses but it's like okay well how do you make sure that these teenagers are going to a neighbor's house that they, like what is the security behind it so these were questions just given from their classmates so it's really a beautiful way to actually get them critically thinking about what does it really mean to have a business and then also make it make sense so that it's like well how will you actually make money doing it and so also so there's just so many different aspects that go into it. And so I'm just so grateful to be able to witness these girls from taking this, you know, being super shy, not really knowing one another, to having these long lasting friendships from class, and then also having something that they can actually, you know, go on and take that next step further so that they can actually, you know, invest, you know, some of that money that they get from investor panel towards their business, actually bring that dream to reality. So um, that's kind of the overview of the A Chicago program. Um, I'm, I love being a part of it. And so if you were always looking for, you know, more volunteers to be able to pair and mentor our girls and, and um, truly it's such an amazing opportunity to work with some of these, with these girls. Thank you, Rachel. That was awesome. So we, I am going to turn it over right now to Diana, who is going to share with you the Yay Volunteer Opportunities. And at the end, when all of our speakers have concluded, I'll talk about some of the other volunteer opportunities that are outside of the Yay program. So Diana, I'll, I'll let you have a head. Well, welcome everyone. And this was supposed to be an in-person event, but as we know, life has certainly changed. And one of the things that 
we are doing is trying to get all of you to also get to know each other. So hopefully next year, instead of this being a Zoom event, we will have it at a location where you can also network because there are so many amazing women who have volunteered their ideas, their time to help all of these girls. And it takes, uh, last year we had 70 volunteers for a class of 18. So I have gone and selected five women to talk specifically about one aspect of what they volunteered. And actually, the, on our website, there is a portal where you can sign up for volunteering and there's a list of things that you can check. But we also encourage if there's something that you want to do that you don't see on our list, then add it because we're all, as Jody said, the programs are expanding, so it's, it's always in motion. But today you're going to hear, and I'll introduce them as a group, and then they will be speaking in order. And the first one is going to be Shirlene Small, who has been a mentor for the last two classes, but besides mentoring, she also helped with student interviews. Before a girl is a bit, um, accepted into the program, they go before a live interview. And this in itself, for most of the girls, this is a first experience for them. So it's the uh, same set of questions that the girls are asked, but a volunteer is interviewing them. And then after Charlene talks a little bit about herself, why she enjoys volunteering and what her experience was and then specifically talking about the interview process after her is going to be dare and dare has actually been involved with yay for three years um three years ago she what she had sheila's job she was the program manager which is an amazing behind the scenes job that really runs the program. Um, and then the last two years, Dare has been a mentor. So she's going to be talking about mentoring. Besides mentoring, Dare has also worked as a moderator. We, in the past, when, in a different lifetime it feels like, we had um, recruitment events and the girls, would come and talk about their experience, and Dare was a moderator for that. So then after Dare is going to be Lydia Brown, and Lydia has also been involved for two years. Lydia actually attended a recruitment event in uh, August of 2018 and fell in love with the program and has been so supportive. Lydia actually, she's been, two years ago she was a mentor, and then this past year she was a business plan reviewer, and she's going to talk about the opportunity for reviewing business plans. She was also on the mock investor panel. Um, but Lydia moved to Boston a year ago, and she still volunteers with Yay. So she flew in to Chicago for the mock investor panel but Lydia will tell her story her experience and then after Lydia is Carla and Carla and I actually I was a volunteer when I met Carla I interviewed Carla and her daughter in 2016 for Lauren to Lauren was applying for the program and since then I think, Carla, you've done everything. Carla has been um, a business plan reviewer. She's been a speaker for us. She has been on the mock investor panel, and that's what she's going to talk about is the mock investor panel. Her daughter, Lauren, is one of our superstars. She was in sixth grade when she was in the YAY program, and she went on to national competition and won, won third place nationally. And Lauren is always available to speak. Um, 
and then Katerina is going to close with all of the volunteers. And if you've been involved with Yay for multiple years, you will notice a huge difference in our marketing. Katerina does our social marketing and the program has just blossomed because of the exposure that we have. And Katerina has done an amazing job. So what I'm asking each one of them to do is to tell their story, sell you on why you want to volunteer, and then um, the chat is available for you to ask any questions, and then we'll be doing Q&A later. So we'll go back to Charlene, and if Charlene unmutes herself, and then Charlene will take it from here, and we'll just go in the order that I said. Hello, everyone. Um, as Diana said, uh, my name is Charlene Small, and I am managing partner of Emerging Business Solutions Group. We're a CPA and consulting firm. Um, and as Diana said, this is actually, or last year was actually my second year um, volunteering with Chicago Yay. And um, so in 2019, in the 2019-2020 program year, I actually served as a interviewer. So I was a mentor both years, and then I served as an interviewer um, this past year. Uh, and I actually found that experience um, very rewarding. Um, interviewing is a quick and easy yet impactful way to really um, uh, to make an impact on the organization. Um, so the interviews that I conducted were conducted on a Saturday morning, like Saturday mid-morning, early afternoon. Um, and so it was really easy to get downtown, no traffic, you know, uh, no bother with that. So it was really easy, you know, and quick to get into, you know, downtown and do the interviews. And then, you know, I was done by mid-afternoon. So it was really quick and easy and, you know, straightforward. Um, but I found it to be really impactful because what I really liked about the 2019-2020 program year is to watch the girls from the time that they interviewed until the time that they completed the program. So the prior year, I was actually blown away. So we started, as a mentor, we started with the girls in a brainstorming session, and then we came back maybe a few weeks later, four or five weeks later, and started the mentoring process. And I was amazed at the growth in just that short period of time from when they were brainstorming ideas to when they kind of actually had the formulation of their business plans when we started to mentor them. Well, in 2019, 2020, I was really blown away by how far they came from the interview process to when we started to mentor them until when they completed the program. So I think the other part of mental, I mean, the part, other part of interviewing and why it was so impactful is that you really have a chance to listen to the girls, you really have a chance to observe them and ask questions. So in addition to it just being an opportunity to identify candidates for the A program, you really actually have a chance to get insight into them. So what I try to do during the interviewing process is to actually make notes about, you know, what I thought their personalities were like, what their interests were like, what their strengths were, and maybe their opportunities, because there's some girls that you're going to meet, and they are super confident, and they're ready to go, and all you have to do is kind of lay out the roadmap for them, and they're ready to go. And then there's other young ladies who need a bit more coaching. You know, you have to encourage them more. They build their confidence over the term of the program. So in the interview process, it's a way to kind of identify that and make notes so that by the time the program leaders get the information, they kind of walk in the door and maybe have an initial idea of who the girls are, what they need, and how they can help them. So that's why I said it's kind of an easy, you know, one day or two days, depending on how many days you interview. It's an easy way, but it's really a very impactful way of helping the girls right from the beginning of the program. Um, so I enjoyed it and I would really recommend it and it was a great opportunity. Thank you, Charlene. Hi everybody, I'm Dara Shank. I am a Senior Director of Account Management at Morning Consult. So I work in um, the market research world. I've been involved with the EA program for a few years now and I really am just blown away every year by all of the great ideas that the students bring to the table. 
Um, so as a mentor, it's really your job to be the sounding board and help with all of the little operational technical details that go into building that business plan. I promise you do not have to have any entrepreneurial experience yourself to be a mentor. I do not. And the um, outline for the mentors to work with is very, very easy to follow to help the girls with their business plan. There's a strict um, schedule, so you'll know exactly what days you come to class, so it can help align with your own personal life and work schedule. And then the girls are going to be working in a very specific manner on different items to address for their business plan. And as a mentor, you also have a manual that you can also reference to help guide the girls, brainstorm, help them think through all of the little details that must go into making their business go from an idea to an actual viable business. And you're really there to help them with things from just brainstorming, but also down to the softer skills, such as encouraging them on the public speaking, helping them with some of the small edits that they might need in some of their writing. So I find this experience incredibly rewarding because you get to just sit down and put your shoes in a young girl's um, just experience right now of what it feels like to be able to have that opportunity to come out with an idea and create a business at such a young age. I highly recommend mentoring if you're interested in giving back to your community in any way. Um, so happy to answer any other questions at the end of this call about mentoring. Thank you, Dare. Lydia. Hi, uh, my name is Lydia Brown. I've worked with the Yay program since 2018 in a couple different capacities. Um, I own two different businesses, um, Boston and Chicago Collegiate Nannies. And as Diana mentioned, I am located in Boston now. Um, so I think what I am supposed to be speaking on today is the idea of being a business plan reviewer. Um, that's what I did last year. And there was a couple of things that were really great about that. Um, obviously, we're living in an age where everything is going online now. And I think, you know, moving out of Chicago and for anyone that um, doesn't feel like they can make um, a bigger commitment, being a business plan reviewer was actually really helpful because I was able to do it remote. Um, I also like the fact that I got to see the finished product. Uh, the year previously, I had worked as a mentor, and you're really helping the girls from inception to finished product. And I think as a business plan reviewer, it was neat to just see the finished product because um, you're not going through, you know, A to B to C, D. You get to see the whole, the whole idea and the well thought out plan, and you get to give them comments and feedback that are actually going to really impact what they decide to do moving forward. Um, you know, as a mentor, you work one on one with the child moving forward and it's really just the two of you hashing out ideas but i think as a business plan reviewer you're the first person maybe outside of family members that's really listening to their idea and saying yeah this is gonna work or hey you know i, I love the idea but let's think of it this way or we might have missed something with this so you get to have a really big impact on them while also getting to see the big picture and i felt like that was really important um trying to think what else um I think, you know, the one thing I, I really liked about it was we're, we're really encouraged to be uplifting as we go through their business plans. They're still children and we want to make sure to be positive, but I think you can also give them constructive feedback in a way that makes them think a little bit more about ideas that they may have thought would have worked, but upon thinking further, like, oh, you know, I haven't thought of it that way. So I kind of like being able to offer that as well. Um, and then when I flew in last year for the investor panel, getting to hear them actually pitch and seeing the, um, the little girl that I had read her business plan for getting to pitch was really exciting as well because I, I got to see that finished product and also hear some of the feedback that I had given her when she pitched the idea at the end. So um, yeah, that was my experience as a business plan reviewer. Thank you so much, Lydia. And we appreciate you flying in from Boston even to do that. Thank yes, you. <laughs> All right, Carla. Hello. All right. Um, so I'm Carla Robinson, CEO of Canary Telehealth. My daughter, Lauren, is a 2017 YEA graduate. 
and I've been an avid volunteer for YEA since then. Um, I'll talk, talk first about my experience as a parent. So Lauren got so much from her experience. She was 12 years old and sixth grade at the time. And Dara Shank, who's, who spoke earlier, was actually her incredibly valuable mentor. And as a parent, it was great to have that mentor. I think um, Lauren having someone else to work on the business plan with really encouraged her to own it and be empowered in a way that's different than like her and her mom working together on, on the plan. So that role was so incredibly valuable to her. So thanks again, Dare. Um, as Diane mentioned, she was um, fortunate enough to place third in the national competition um, and received a $20,000 scholarship to Rochester Institute of Technology. But from there, so many doors opened up for her as one thing led to another, which led to another. Um, but as a parent, it was really fascinating watching her develop and grow over the course of the program. So she's a, she has a naturally more reserved personality, but this really pushed her interpersonal skills, forcing things like small talk, which is the trepidation of um, people who are more introverted. Um, but she developed her other communication skills quite substantially as well. So I no longer have to coach her on written communications, even the rather senior level people. So she just wrote the Surgeon General um, an update note on how she was doing, or the former Surgeon General an update note, and I didn't have to touch it at all. But it started with her having to get out there and do those kinds of things um, as she was pursuing um, her project in YEA. Um, and she understands how to develop and deliver an excellent presentation. Just a couple of weeks ago, she was presenting a virtual talk for a healthcare event at Johns Hopkins University. And she did a terrific job leveraging some of the skills that started right here at YEA. Uh, I've seen her business savvy and general understanding of how the world works just grow phenomenally. Um, I, you know, I really started with this uh, 12 year old sixth grader. And by the end of the year, I thought, who is this little Minim, you know, mini business person on my hands. But Lauren is now very interested in scientific research and has already drawn the parallels between pitching a business idea to pitching research ideas for things like grant funding. And she understands that you have to put, couch things in terms of what's in it for them and, and you have to be able to get support for your ideas no matter what you're doing. So this was really truly a, a formative and transformative experience for her. And I'm very, very grateful for the program. Um, speaking as an, a volunteer about the mock investor panel, um, I really enjoyed being uh, on this panel. It gives the students a chance to take their ideas from that detailed business plan to a much abbreviated presentation format. Um, you just really don't have that much time, so you've got to figure out what are really the winning um, elements of your plan and get that across in a high impact way. Um, this synthesis in and of itself is a valuable skill to develop. Um, but as a panelist, you can add so much value in a short amount of time in helping them to identify gaps, either somewhere in their logic or in the communication presentation of it. Your feedback at this stage can make the difference between the student nailing it when they get in front of the investor panel or causing the panel members to get lost on the concept or distracted by fallacies or inconsistencies in the financials. I think it also helped to arm the students with answers to likely questions and overall just helps them feel more confident going into their final presentation. Um, having gotten a chance to exhale from having um, finally shared their ideas with others. So I've had a great experience both as a parent and a volunteer and Diana, you know, you can keep calling on me. Thank you, Carla. You're amazing. We appreciate everything that you do. Thank you. Oh. All right, Katarina, our social media maven. Thank you, Jody. Hello, everyone. My name is Katarina. And as Jody mentioned, I'm a social media volunteer. Um, I'm also a manager at Deloitte. And pre-COVID days, I've been on the road probably 99%. And you've heard so many different speakers and the volunteers, how they're volunteering with the program. But I think this is just such a different glimpse of how you can continue volunteering to such an amazing organization like FEMA, Strong and Yeah, but not being necessarily physically at that location. And just to give a bit of a background on how I even got to this and what am I getting out of this is I'm naturally just a very curious person. I want to know everything. I'm, I'm just so curious. 
but I also want to educate people. And that's how I became so involved into encouragement, encouraging younger girls to go out there and just explore, not being afraid to fail. And if you fail, what matters is like how many times you can stand up. And to me, that was always my passion since I was myself even a teenager to help younger girls. Plus my hobby for, with photography and just naturally just being curious about things and then documenting in social media when one of the board members, Jenny Gum, asked me, is like, would you be interested in volunteering for the social media? I didn't even think twice. I was my first question, I think, before I even said yes, I said, when do I start? That's like the most important thing was for me. It's like, when can I start helping? Because I truly believe that social media is, is such a powerful tool to spread the message. It's not just with the community, but it's with the community that the, we are surrounding ourselves. But so many times we've been learned about things through social media. And sometimes people forget about that. And to me, it's something that, how do we also continue encouraging our girls to continue to grow. And you will see, we will post sometimes Motivational Monday about strong females that are gave such an impact. And so girls can continue to be motivated to grow and explore things. And it's also like, how do we as organization evolve? Because if you can see where we started last year and where we are today, as Jody mentioned earlier, amazing programs are coming here and there. And sometimes I'm just like, oh my gosh, so much to post. One day I post all of this, you know? And I think that just shows how much there is for everyone who is looking for opportunities to volunteer, but cannot commit physically to be in the space when the program is taking. There's just so much. And as Diana mentioned also, if you don't see something, just ask. Because most of the times it's like, we might be missing something, right? We want to hear from you as well. And to me, that social media, even communication with potential volunteers or donors or whoever, it's just so uplifting to know for what kind of cause we are contributing our efforts and how much we are uplifting our our younger female future leaders. And I would just gonna say, if you really want to do something, you can find a way and you can find fun for this. Thank you, Katerina. And I'm so thankful for her because I, I am not good at social media. I am asking my daughters about Instagram and what's my story. And I called it a grid and they're like, mom, it is not a grid. So anyway, I am so thankful to have her on board. Um, I want to move on. So many of you have been receiving our emails and we have a new female strong website. And so we want to make sure everyone knows about it. We have colors and brand and, and that's been really fun to put together. And um, you heard a lot from volunteers that are part of the YAY program. And Katerina, of course, helps us a little bit behind the scenes, a lot bit behind the scenes, but there are other behind the scenes jobs that are available too. We have a writer and I think she might be on this call for our newsletter. We are always looking for writers. Uh, we want to do more microblogging, help you know, write things that we can post on our LinkedIn or extended pieces that we can put on our social media. We'd love to evolve to a blog. So there's lots of opportunities with that. And then apart from the YAY program, we have of course our Business Blast program, which has mentors as well. And next summer when we have our idea camp, we'll need volunteers for that. Um, we're always looking for graphic designers and photographers and videographers and um, you name it. So we would love to have you. Um, we are recruiting for our next yay class that starts in October and we could use your help. So if you know, and we're virtual this year. So if you know anyone and sometimes, you know, they might've been in far suburban Chicago and we're like, well, I, it's hard for me to get downtown on Tuesdays. You know, this, this is their year. So please nominate them, forward them the application on our website, reach out to Diana, reach out to me, reach out to any of us, and we'll make sure that you get all of the information you need. We want you to stay in touch with us. We have um, a LinkedIn for Female Strong. We have Instagram for both Female Strong and Yay. We have a Twitter but I, for Female Strong, but I gotta say, I haven't tweeted. 
I don't, <laughs> I need to learn that too. Um, and YouTube for female strong. We've, we've had some fun videos and I think you've started to see some of our volunteer videos that we've been posting. So that's, that's pretty neat too. Um, at the bottom, you'll see contact information. I know many of you know Diana. You, there's a general information email there as well. Um, you can find us, we're, we're easy to find. So I wanted to open it up for Q&A and I think Sheila might have been monitoring our chat here or, let's see. Yes, but it, it was just me, right. some relevant links. <laughs> but Okay, um, okay, good. Anyone. Yeah, so if anyone has a question um, yourself, we're happy to answer any questions or our speakers are happy to answer any question. Or we just did a really good job in telling you everything and so you might not have any questions. All right. Well, with well, we that, I want question. to thank everybody. Wait, Jody, we have a question. Oh, we do. <laughs> yeah, we, they're coming in. <laughs> yes. So right. uh, we have a question from Anna Maria. Um, does it matter okay. where the girls are from, suburb, city, et cetera? So no, um, it doesn't, except for if they're from the Palatine area, because there is a yay chapter in the Palatine area. So we want to make sure that that chapter, you know, has access to those students. But no, suburban, city, um, and we've, we've been allowed for girls that have been in some of our other female strong programs that might not reside here to be able to participate in our programs. We are not going to be um, actively marketing outside of our region because there are, I don't know how many A chapters, Sheila, you might know, there are a lot domestically. And Ellen was one of the, the leaders from Pittsburgh or Philadelphia on the call. And there's even A chapters internationally. So it's, it's pretty cool. Thanks for asking that, Anna Maria. Um, so hopefully that answers your first question, Marita. Another question that we have is, can you share examples of business concepts from the girls? So perhaps some ideas. Oh, yeah. You know what, Sheila, why don't you take that one? Because you're, well, you and Rachel both were in the classroom, but you could maybe highlight three or four business ideas from last year or two. Yeah. Um, Rachel, I, I don't know if you want to take this one. I, I don't mind stepping in. I can, I can give a few um, offhand. So what comes to mind is one is the Saunders winner. Saunders is the national competition you heard um, Carla, the parent, talk about her daughter, Lauren, attend. Um, we had our winner, Jessica. Her business idea was actually a really unique one and very niche. Um, she grew up um, in a foster home and uh, her idea was to help bridge the gap between um, African-American or um, black children and white parents um, who don't necessarily know how to handle their hair. So it was transracial resource. Uh, it was called Margaret's Child. So it was a book and accompanying hair products. So an all around business idea, which is really unique and obviously um, was really interesting and came from her own background experience. So I think that personal story really resonated with investors at the investor panelists and also just the idea that um, again, we often feel close to the businesses that we create, um, that it really became her own personal story and something that she could look forward to. So that was one idea. Um, another example is one student we had who created um, a business called OCD Away. Um, similar to Jessica, she had um, wanted to talk about her own struggles with mental health and reduce the stigma, especially for younger girls and teenagers surrounding mental health. So um, she wanted to create an app, particularly a platform that allowed teens um, to connect with others and provide a safe space monitored and moderated by professionals um, to allow them to um, really connect with each other and, and receive resources for that. So those are two examples that come to mind. Um, we also have more typical examples. Uh, for example, we have Tremaya, who's one of our superstar students who has a line of t-shirts called Rebel Style. So those are t-shirts for um, children, parents, um, kind of matching family uh, lines. So those are a couple of examples from both typical to a little less uh, typical. Rachel, do you have any favorites that you want to share? 
Um, yeah, I love the ones that you had mentioned. Um, Tremaya also actually when the pandemic and COVID first started actually uh, created her own masks as well. So she uh, started and distributed those on her own. So, she, you know, just like the little entrepreneur she is, she kind of did that. Um, it took Pivoting, it that's what we teach them. <laughs> <laughs> Pivoting, exactly. Um, and then I would say, yeah, another one of our students, Annika, she um, basically was talking about creating a, um, basically a clothing swap within her school to, instead of like kind of bypass, um, like trying to get like, you know, basically $2 or a dollar for like your clothes at Plato's Closet, like why not like, you know, coordinate with people at your school to actually um, kind of help bridge the gap between like secondhand clothing and actually find something um, and having these different aspects of her business and like kind of have a membership site that would actually help monitor so that there was, everything was like super secure and it was only at her school. So that was a really cool idea. She was actually the runner up for um, the investor panel this year. Yeah, thank you ladies. Um, we there, do have a couple more questions, Jody. actually, sorry. So. Um, Alan, before we get to your question, we had um, a private example, which is um, what happens with the graduates' ideas? So how many of them actually go into business, um, kind of the second step? Um, and then is there legal support to protect the student's intellectual property? Wow, those are great questions. So um, first of all, the YAY program and Female Strong had been almost completely volunteer run by our amazing board for, oh, until about a year ago. So we didn't have the back office staff and people to really keep in touch with a lot of our past EA graduates. And so frankly, we lost touch with, with many of them, but we've reestablished touch with many of them. And the Business Blast program is doing that. Um, legal support, um, if there are lawyers out there that would like to volunteer their time for our girls that need that support, uh, that would be wonderful. We have not encountered the need for that at that level, but um, we would love to have a, a lawyer volunteer on our roster. Yes. Um, so thank you all for your questions and, and Marita, hopefully that sheds some insight into the, the examples. We are developing student business page, but you can go on our Yay Chicago website to see a few of the ideas that some of these uh, young girls have. So we try to highlight them there. Um, lastly, let's get to Ellen's question, which is how much money do you need annually to support all of your programs? I think this is more surrounding fundraising um, and how everyone has, has the ability to contribute in some way, whether that's time or monetarily. So Jody, I'll let you speak to that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ellen, for closing with that question. That's awesome. So um, it, it to help. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> it costs us about $70,000 to run one yay program. And the tuition is $695 for the yay program. And we do offer financial assistance for those that are in need. Um, so you all can do the math. That doesn't, that doesn't cover that much. Uh, the investor panel is and has been a major fundraiser for us. Uh, the, it, it's no secret. The investors invest $5,000 to sit on the investor panel. And a portion of that money goes to fund the starting, startup of the girls' businesses. Last year, I think we granted almost $10,000 to the girls to start their businesses. Um, so that has been really our mainstay for fundraising. And secondly, that's why they brought me here too. So that's part of my job um, to increase our outreach within corporations, to apply for grants, to work with family foundations. So we, we, we tap into all of those. Um, but certainly if anyone out there has connections within the companies they work with and you could make introductions for me, I would love it. Um, or if you know some family foundations and could make introductions, I would love it. So thank you. Awesome. Well, that's all of the questions in the chat. Unless anybody has any outstanding okay. questions, hurry up and get them in. Um, otherwise, Jody, I'll let you wrap up. Yeah. So thank you, everybody, for taking your time tonight to coming 
to learn more about Female Strong and our YAY program and all of our additional programs and growth. Thank you to our volunteers. Thank you to our speakers. And if anybody who has not signed up for volunteering yet and is so inspired after today, please visit our website and there is a volunteer spot for you to just fill it out and Diana will, uh, will get right on that and contact you very quickly. So thank you everyone. And I can't wait till we're in person one of these days. Next year, at same time, we're gonna be doing this in person. So thank you everybody, have a nice night.